Hi everyone, uh, in this video I want to talk about uh, air glasses, why we need them, so this is a part 2, the first video is already on my YouTube channel, so you can go and check it out. Uh, in part 1 of the video I explain um, uh, a few of those uh, main reasons why uh, I think that uh, AR glasses are needed uh, and their benefits, advantages compared to a uh, um, standard mobile AR. Uh, in this video, I'm going to mention a few other uh, points which are also important and I think that uh, uh, people should know about. So, let's begin. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about is uh, EEG. Uh, it's uh, short for uh, Electroencephalography. Uh, and I want to read uh, the um, definition from Wikipedia. So uh, let's call it EEG for short, it will be easier for me. EEG as a, um, is an electrophy uh, cellological monitoring method to record electrical activity of the brain. It's typically non-invasive with the electrodes placed along the scalp. Although invasive electrodes are sometimes used, such as uh, electrocorticography, EEG measures voltage fluctuations resulting from ionic current uh, within the neurons of the brain. Now, there's already a company called Emotive that actually sells a product. Um, uh, in the website, uh, it says um, uh, research, research grade uh, neurotechnology, scalable and easy to use uh, EEG technology for neuroscience, your marketing, cognitive performance, and brain control technology applications. And they said, uh, you know, um, I want to use Emoti 4 and the options are performance and wellness, brain control technology, brain research and education, and consumer insights. Uh, there you can actually see the device. Uh, it's kind of a device that you put on your head with electrodes, a high resolution 14 channel mobile, yeah, mobile EEG used for contextualized scientific research grade results. Uh, there's one that is a, a prosumer product, which is only with five channels, um, used by engaged individuals seeking better understanding of their brains and mental state. Now, I also have uh, seen um, an EEG headset. Uh, this is called uh, Mindflex from uh, Metal, uh, M-A-T-T-E-L, uh, in which users move uh, a ball around a small obstacle course using their brain power just using this device without any voice recognition just by thinking about things now according to uh, how stuff works um, i quote uh, this idea is that when the technology is perfected patients with paralysis will be able to control things through a computer using only their thoughts so just think about uh, the implication of this now, if you already have an AR uh, glasses on, what if we can uh, use those um, electrodes and connect them to our brain uh, from the headset itself, the AR headset, and then use it in order to uh, command, control applications by, by just using thoughts instead of using voice control or anything. Now, have it happened to you sometimes where you wanted to use uh, your virtual assistant uh, just to say something, for example, uh, open Google Maps and you feel embarrassed because you know just in front of people saying things to yourself? So with this technology, you can actually do this without saying anything. Now imagine being in a difficult situation and you want to just call 911, for example. So if you just can think about those numbers, 911, the headset will automatically do it privately and nobody else, just you, know about it. You can create discrete communication like this. And actually many things that you actually do with your device uh, we can be done privately without anyone around you knowing uh, what's happening. So theoretically and probably technically as well, uh, we can use this technology in AR headset as well. And this open up, open up an opportunity to create different types of human interfaces uh, so we can interact with apps in ways that we uh, it was, uh, uh, wasn't possible before. So this is just an interesting, this is a big topic by the way, 
I, I didn't uh, dig deep into it, but uh, this is something that I wanted to raise up because I think uh, there's an opportunity here to create something using this technology that we can benefit uh, when we use it uh, alongside uh, uh, air glasses. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about is a health monitoring. Now, uh, you probably already know um, Apple Watch that can monitor your different types of health signals, uh, including um, um, heart rate. And actually, heart rate can also be monitored if you have uh, sensors uh, placed in the frame of uh, the glasses themselves. So if it's a heart rate monitor, we can place like a receiver, a sender and a receiver, like an infrared that can actually measure the heart rate of the user. And then uh, the sensor can actually um, record uh, exercise information uh, and save it into a, a local storage or maybe send it um, into a remote server or for analysis or for display in another app. I mean, there are many options for this, but again, uh, having these types of uh, health monitoring sensors, which are placed in the frame and they can measure the heart rate. Uh, and then this can be used, this data can be used uh, in different apps and all that without actually wearing a watch or uh, a heart monitoring device attached to any other part of your body. So this is a good use for, uh, you know, to have this feature, a health monitoring system embedded into the glasses as well. Uh, and it's very comfortable when you go outside, when you go running, walking, you can do this exercise, uh, exercises while wearing the glasses. And a good use for it. Uh, all right, let's move on. Now, if you already have AR glasses on you, would you actually need a smartphone? And if so, for what? Of course, there will be uh, things that uh, people will want to uh, do uh, on a tablet, on a phone, um, and those will be better uh, compared to if you do this uh, with a user interface that is designed for augmented reality glasses. Now, if you consider the fact that there is audio and of course the visuals and there might be also haptic feedback, there's no reason for you to carry your phone. You can leave it at home even if you have a phone and just carry the AR glasses with you. Now, of course, right now, the technology has limitations, as many limitations, actually. And uh, let's say that none of the available devices will make me replace my phone right now. I mean, not think not today, not next year, but again, who knows what uh, the future will bring uh, in a few years time. So I left this in the question mark, not that I have a question about whether we will need our phones in the future, but uh, because right now, of course, this is something that if you're gonna go and buy, for example, the Magic Leap One, uh, you won't drop your phone for this. Uh, you're gonna still keep it and use it for years to come. But again, it's just something to think about uh, when we talk about um, uh, AR glasses and their benefits. Now, we also need to keep in mind that when you're using air glasses, those sensors are going to be exposed to the environment around us. This means we can use sensor that detects uh, heat or different type of uh, maybe danger gases or, um, you know, uh, listen to the environment. It can be done much better uh, if you use air glasses, something that you can't use if you use a mobile phone because the mobile phone is in your pocket and of course the sensors can read the data accurately. So the topic here is not just about uh, having better, um, a better ability to sense things uh, for the same sensors, but also allow different type of sensors to be used compared to mobile AR or, if, or using them uh, on different types of wearables. The thing is that most of your body usually is covered by clothing. Yeah, the only thing that usually is exposed is your hands, uh, your legs sometimes, and of course your head. And because of this, uh, this is probably the best place to put sensors, right? If you think about it, sometimes you're gonna use glasses, sometimes, uh, sorry, sometimes you're gonna use gloves, sometimes you're gonna put your uh, hands in your pockets. So maybe hands are not the best way to, do, uh, to place those sensors. Of course, it depends on the design uh, of the glasses, but for example, look at the HoloLens. Uh, you can actually place sensors all around this frame 
even at the back. Uh, but again, it depends on the design. If you just gonna make uh, AR glasses uh, look like standard glasses, you won't put uh, anything behind because there won't be that um, that arc part that's in the back of the head like you have with the uh, all lens. Now this is also a big topic because you need to consider the fact that when we use AI, we're probably going to use different types of sensors. Some of them that probably you know haven't been used uh, this way or haven't been invented yet, but they can feed out AI with different type of data, uh, which um, some algorithms can benefit from. So this is something that uh, you know it's great to know that. Uh, we're going to have glasses, so uh, developers, hardware developers can uh, think about what type of um, data we need to read and they know that they can develop this type of sensors that can be implemented uh, in a way that the data can be read, not just, you know, in the right way, but also continuously as the user wears the glasses. So this is the end of part two. If you haven't uh, uh, seen uh, the first part, just uh, search my uh, YouTube channel. You're gonna find it. Just write air glasses. Uh, and um, I'm gonna bring you part three very, very soon. Uh, but now it's very early in the morning and the person needs to go to bed sometimes. So uh, I'll see you in the next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, also share it with your friends and colleagues. Um, thank you very much. See you very, very soon. Bye-bye.